Today we're going to be talking about the new Dell XPS 15 2018 with the i9 processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Let's do this. Hey, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. So what we'll be talking about is content creation in the digital space, whether that be photography, videography, graphic design, anything that pertains to content creation, we're going to be talking about. We're going to be growing together as a community. So I really love this brand new laptop that Dell just came out, well, relatively just came out with. It came out like several months ago. I've had it for a few months, like I think uh, two weeks after it came out, it came in the mail. I initially did a video on it and I said some things that I don't really still believe in and it was just, it just was a mess. There was some issues I had with it originally that I was able to fix and some issues I still kind of had with it and there's not that many issues I still have, but I just wanted to redo the video and give you guys the correct review that my experience with the laptop, since I do a lot of video editing, Lightroom, Photoshop, light HTML work here and there. I just, it's a great laptop all around. I got the i9 processor because I thought I needed the powerhouse. At the time, they had a deal for the i9 processor to be the same price as their i7 processor. So I was like, why the hell am I going to even buy the i7 processor for the same price if I had a small business to buy the i9? It, it didn't make sense. So I bought the upgraded version. Main issue that I have with this laptop is that it can overheat a little bit. And, that, and that's, that's not even that big of an issue for me because if you just prop this guy up to give the fans proper ventilation, then you're okay. But it does run into some... Uh, fans being kind of loud and obnoxious. You get used to that. If you have headphones, you're not going to even worry about it. Most of the time I'm working with headphones, so you're not going to even worry about that. Something about this laptop that I really do like that is it's nice and powerful. You can overclock it really easily. The only issues is if you're overclocking it or if you're doing too much power with the i9 processor, you're going to run out of battery faster. However, if you have on the lower modes, which is still powerful enough for Photoshop and Lightroom and some HTML work and some light productivity work, I'm seeing around seven to six hours of battery usage without charging it. That's almost a full day of work just on the laptop alone doing light work. Now, if I'm doing some, if I'm doing light video editing with a couple tracks, it can last longer. Though with bigger files, I'm maximizing around three to four hours on just the battery alone. It's just a beautiful laptop. Uh, we all, you've seen the videos on this guy. It has two USB ports, it has a USB-C port, it has an auxiliary jack, HDMI, there's tether safes, but it's their own tether safe, so that's just their own issue. It has these little buttons right here to let you know how long the battery is, and it has an SD card slot. So let's just talk kind of the nitty gritty about this guy. It's super powerful. The keys are nice and light. It's not too crazy. It's not that heavy. I throw this on my back. It, I go everywhere on the town with it. It's just, it's a reliable laptop. My initial issue with the laptop was the fact that it had a 1050 graphics card on it. I really wanted a 1060 in the laptop I was buying, but at the time, there wasn't much in the market. And those ultra thin and lights uh, that have a 1060, their battery is shit. I need good batteries. So I was initially editing and I was throwing it onto this monitor while having this as a spare monitor. And it was not performing well. It was being really shitty. I, I excuse my French. It was just not working right. So I was like, this can't be right. This can't be at all what's going on with this graphics card. So I call up a bunch of people. I call Dell. I call NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is actually the person that helped me fix my issue with this specific problem. And they said, oh, okay. So you have, what you have to do is you have to go into the NVIDIA control panel. Automatically, it's going to be, it's going to have it. So it's optimizing for your performance, but with Adobe Premiere, it's not going to fully optimize itself. So you have to go in, click a couple things and you click them on optimize performance when open Adobe Premiere. And that's going to fully run the, the GTX 1080 graphics card because with the i9 processor, it has its own inboard graphics card. It's weak. It's very weak. And that's how it's able to save battery on the lower performing modes is using the i9 processor's graphics card. However, you need to make sure you're going in and fully utilizing the 1050. And after that, it was running so freaking smooth. It was fast. It was reliable. It's not, you know, it's not a 1060, it's not a 1070, it's not a 1080, but it's working well for video production. The 32 gigabytes of RAM really shows through the fact that I'm able to render video, go into Photoshop, go into Lightroom, and have all these different project files open at the same time and work smoothly. There's there's no problem there. Another big issue I had with this laptop in terms of content creation is that it might be too powerful. What the fuck does that even mean, too powerful? Well, so I was, having, I was working on a footage. I was working on a video. It was probably like a 28-minute edit. I've had, I was exporting all day. Like I've had some exports here and there. I was on my final export of the 28 minute piece, right? I had the, I had the trailer version, the highlight version. For some reason, when I was going to the longer version that had more footage than the other versions, it wasn't exporting. And, and this was specifically a Sony clip. 
I just wanted to throw that out there. I it was an X point. It kept stopping at seventy five percent. I would lower the, the rate. It would go up to a little bit, like probably seventy six percent. It was always stopping at this one specific clip because I would even export this section of the footage and this section of the footage, excluding that one piece that I thought messing up and it wasn't going. So I call Adobe. Uh, you know how Adobe is. They can be a little bit of a hassle. I call Adobe. I call Dell. And the gist and Correct me if I'm wrong. If you actually know the problem with this issue, please correct me because I'm still kind of mind blown by this whole issue. Is that Dell knows that they're cre and Microsoft as well with Windows knows that this laptop is going to be specifically used for content creation for a lot of video editing, heavier end programs. So they try to optimize it well for Adobe. And you could really see that being portrayed here. You could really see that coming through with this laptop. So what happens is when Adobe sees a problem, right? Whether that be a footage or not, it's going to over optimize to fix that problem and inherently get rid of the problem. So Adobe was seeing the Sony clip as an issue, right? The footage wasn't corrupted. There was just some, there was just some issue that was going on with it. And Dell's like, oh, hey, that's a fucking problem. We got to get rid of it. So Dell and the, and the internal workings of Microsoft tries to like exile the problem because that's what Adobe's trying to figure out. And ultimately it's, it's overworking itself, fix the issue. And it's now making a render issue and like lost your footage. And I honestly, I, I, I had no idea how to fix the problem. I just had to go on a different computer and export. Um, that is what, that's the gist of what I got. I was so confused that day on how to fix it. I, I was like stressing. I need to get the footage in the next day. All in all, that is what I understood from it is some communication error between Dell, Adobe, and Microsoft. You could, you could correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I have no idea. Any who's in Dale, off that side rant. The Dell XPS 15 is a super powerful laptop. Yeah, there's some issues like overheating the fans a little too loud. It's a reliable, strong laptop that gets the job done. I've been with this to Canada, Japan. I've been throwing it around. It's built like a horse too. Don't misconstrue that. Just because it's a thin and light and it's a Dell, it's built to last. One thing that you will notice with my Dell is that I have a D brand skin on it, the marble skin. Cause when I was looking at videos online, I thought it was kind of ugly. I thought that silver was like icky. But then when I actually came in person, I was like, whoa, this is sexy. But I'm still gonna throw the Dell skin on it just to protect it from scratches or what have you. But still this guy is pretty phenomenal. It has a terabyte of storage, 32 gigabytes of RAM, an i7 processor, with an NVIDIA 1050 GXT graphics card. So it's a powerful machine. It's a thin and light. It goes anywhere. The battery is amazing. I seriously can't complain about this laptop. I know some tech people are having some issues with it. I love it as a content creator. I couldn't ask for anything better. If, though, if you are used to Mac and you're making that transition over, because I know Mac is not doing too hot with the new laptops, the trackpad's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Um, it took me like a week. I'm not even a Mac person. Uh, Windows laptops, so the, 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 the trackpads kind of suck, but every time I do use a Mac, I'm like, whoa, this is pretty phenomenal. This is average. This is an average trackpad for a Mac standard, but it's gonna take you a week to get used to it and you're gonna love it. But Windows standards, it's phenomenal. Another great feature is that it has a fingerprint scanner that works really fast. So the moment I turn it on, it automatically scans, turns it on, I'm ready to work. The fact that it's so powerful makes task switching really easy and a breeze. I can't complain about this laptop. I love editing on it. I don't get fatigue. It's just a beautiful workhorse that's made for anything. Now, if you're doing photography or if you're just doing HTML work, are you going to pick up an i9 processor? I don't think so. I think you can just go with the i7 processor. But if you have the deal, if you can do some heavier video editing, I would recommend the i9 processor. Those are just my thoughts and conclusion about this laptop as a content creator. I want to know you guys' thoughts on this laptop. Have you tried it out? Are you thinking about buying it? Are you going to buy it? What version are you going to buy it? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you are going to buy it, I will have an Amazon link down below so you can purchase it there. No need to worry. I'll have the i7 processor version and the i9 version there. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like and subscribe because I come out with videos every week. Kiss, kiss.